Before I start painting, one of the things I like to do is use this nifty product called Gloves in a Bottle, and what it does is it protects your hands from all these solvents and cad cadmium colors, flake white. Uh, a lot of artists use gloves, but this is a really uh, convenient alternative. So, let's get going. This apple, which I painted probably 500 times, as you can tell, and it looks like uh, everybody else has painted it as well. This has all kinds of colors in it. I know most of us look at it and we go, oh, red. It's not really red, it's got all kinds of weird colors in it. And I'm gonna face it towards me, so you're not gonna see, I'm gonna be painting this side of it. So there's a little bit of uh, green and yellow in there as well. And, and then I'm gonna turn it from you so you won't be able to see it. One of the easiest way to mix a color and let me just, let me do this real quick. I'm gonna section off the canvas a little bit. One of the things I try to tell people to do is when you're trying to mix a color, one of the things that makes it easier is to actually put the brush right up next to your object. You know, because we'll be sitting over here and I'm gonna draw my red my red apple and it's like okay it's the color red it's the color red is this the right color red and I say you know what if you just take your brush and go right up to it you know check it out right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna block in block in meaning rather paint the whole apple just in one color and in this case I'm using a little bit of the alizarin crimson and the cadmium red light just to get and I'm just painting the apple just as a shape now one of the scary things about painting is that no color you can't ever get a color correct unless you paint also the color around it so before I do that, I'm going to work on the apple, and then you're going to see me paint some of the background color. One side of the apple is a little darker. There's many ways to do that. One is you can put the alizarin crimson in, the darker color of the alizarin crimson. I'm getting a little bit of a glare here, so you guys are going to tell me if I'm way off. But um, Or what I like to do is take some of the blue and put the blue... The, the ultramarine blue right into that side of the apple and let it blend with the red that you just put down to bring out some of the shadows of the apple. And you've got a little bit of the, a little dark right here. where the apple indents on the top and I'm going to use some cad red light right on top of the red over here where it's a little bit lighter a little more orangey on the side over here which you can't see there's some green in it so I'm going to pick up some of the green with my dirty red brush and put it over here on that side of the apple. Now I feel like this needs to be a little more yellow here. So I'm going to pick up some of the yellow, the cadmium yellow medium, and lightly let it go over the red so it's not totally mixing with it on the canvas because when we're painting with oils we really are mixing on the canvas and while we can mix our colors on the palette what we mix here and what happens when we put it on top of the object is very often not the same anyhow and that's about it for the yellow and then we'll move on to another color okay. so as you can see an apple is not necessarily the pure color red in fact there's so many variations of the red that's why I love painting the apple a lot of people say oh this is simple and then what happens is they do little 8 by 10 paintings and then they 
want to have it framed and bring it home because they're so shocked that there's so much interesting stuff in just a boring little apple. So now on top of the apple, there's some highlights. And I'm just going to put white on top of the alizarin crimson. I know it's not going to be the color white because it's going to blend in with the, the red that I have already on the canvas. So there's just some highlights up here. And I'm just going to, and I'm using the side of my brush. Sometimes I go like that, but it's nice sometimes just painting with the side of the brush so you can feel a little bit loose and put some more of this hot r colored red there. The lizard crimson is the, the purpley dark red. I'm going to go back in and put it in some spots where I think I need to put it back in. And the yeah, apple starts to take a little bit of shape now, she says. And notice, I'm, notice how I'm painting a shape of shadow in the alizarin crimson or this darker color. And I'm really not blending it in with the red, with the lighter red, because if I did, you know, that would happen. And you would lose all of your, your, your feeling of definition and round. A lot of people love to just blend and blend and blend those edges, but I say let the dark and the light butt up against each other. And that way you give the, the object this kind of feeling of being round. And it's really a hard thing sometimes to explain that over blending doesn't help with your drawing. So I'm just using variations of red here. And let's put the stem in. It's a little bit darker here from what, where I'm standing. So I'm going to put that darker in. And just because I want to have some fun, I'm going to put some of the cerulean blue into the red. And you know how I said um, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue make black? Well, cerulean blue will kind of make it black too, but you know, in a, in a way that throws a little more blue in it. There's um, a touch of, of green down in here. Here's the stem. Now the apple's kind of sitting on something. I always like to have it sitting on whatever it's sitting on, otherwise it looks like it's floating. But before I do that, I'm just going to put a little bit of the yellow over here, a little more of it. And again, I'm putting the yellow right on top of the red and letting it just mix in. And now I'm back to the CAD red light because the light is hitting the apple over here. So I'm just going to let that be a little more punchy. And we're just going to throw a little shadow in underneath it just to look like it's sitting on something. And I'm just using basically mud. And mud is just a combination of all these colors just to give it a sense of space or place. And if you put the darkest color right under the apple, That'll make it look like it's sitting. Of course, this apple looks like it's about to fall over because I'm painting it at an angle. But hey, you know, it's fallen over a few times. All right, so there is an apple. Basically, pretty simple, but not. So there's a lot of variations to anything that's simple. In fact, 
Sometimes the simpler the object, the more difficult it is to paint. Don't know why that is, and it's one of the most frustrating things in painting, but it's a good place to start.